In 2011, the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department reopened the investigation of Natalie Wagner Wood and her drowning death. As a result of these efforts, witnesses were identified in 2011 and 2012 that uh, weren't previously known. This case remains a suspicious circumstances death and the information that came forward in 2011 and 2012 has helped present a more articulate timeline in this case. I'd like to thank the witnesses that came forward at that time for providing information and reach out to the general public for those that have firsthand knowledge of the circumstances that occurred that night with Ms. Wood and turn it over to Lieutenant John Karina for additional information regarding this case. <clears throat> First of all, I have to apologize. Uh, last week I got, got that flu that's going around, as you can tell, and so uh, I got that deep, uh, gravelly voice, so I got to take a break here and take a drink of water. Uh, bear with me. Um, uh, as Captain Bergner was saying, uh, we, op we, op we op took another look at this case back in 2011, and uh, that's the one, really the only press conference we did uh, on this case was back then. We uh, held one press conference, and from that press conference, we ended up with like uh, well over 100 people came forward with information about this case. Uh, people were very uh, uh, wanted to get um, uh, really wanted to get involved, and they wanted to uh, kind of tell us what they knew. And it was extremely helpful because we ended up identifying witnesses or people who had uh, information about the case who had never come forward. So they uh, end up coming forward and, and telling us their story. And that's one of the things we've run into uh, this case, in many cases, is like uh, people don't think their information or what they know might, be, might not be important. Well, it was in this case, and uh, it's helped us recreate some of the timeline and what happened on that weekend, and then uh, right up to the point where Natalie Wood ends up uh, going into the water. So it's, uh, uh, it's been extremely helpful for us now, this was back in 2011, 2012, 2013. You know, it's been a little while, but we've been investigating the case. And up until about a year and a half ago, uh, we were still getting uh, information and tips from people calling in, although they were just trickling in then. And, th and things have kind of dried up now. So uh, we were approached by a news agency, wanted to uh, take another look at the case. We thought it was a good, a good idea to try and uh, go ahead and do that and get it back out in the public eye, and that's what we did. Uh, we thought it was a good idea just to let everyone know kind of where we're at with the investigation, and that's why we're here today. So um, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and answer some questions and, and as best I can. Uh, yes? <clears throat> well, there's new witnesses, and um, uh, there has, we have looked at, um, really what we've, re we've interviewed a lot of new people and uh, people on the island, people who were moored near the boat uh, uh, that night or that weekend, people who had a no uh, knew the couple or had knowledge of uh, what was going on that weekend, so it's been extremely helpful in recreating what happened. Uh, so in the uh, 48 Hours report, there was this discussion about these two individuals, the woman saying that she had seen, Mr. Report, seen two people, a man and a woman on the back of the boat. They heard the voices that identified them <coughs> Um, well, the first part of that question is there, there's actually more than one witness in, uh, who came forward and heard uh, them on the back of the boat arguing. And, uh, they, the, the, and what's important about that is uh, they corroborate what uh, Dennis Deverne was saying, that he was on the boat and heard the arguing. And that uh, is really intense and that so bad that he had went down to the cabin to check on them because he was worried that there was some kind of assault going on. And um, uh, that's when he was told to go away by uh, Robert Wagner. And then uh, Natalie and Robert Wagner end up on the back of the boat arguing, and then it goes quiet. So uh, those witnesses who were on a different boat nearby corroborate exactly what Dennis Deverne was telling us. Um, and yes, of course, we want to talk to Robert Wagner. You bet. Uh, we would love to hear his side of his version of events. The uh, version of events he's, he's put up trade in the media, I think, um, we told us the original investigators and we, we portrayed since then really don't add up to what we found or what we've, we've been, we found by talking to other people in uh, uh, that weekend. What they've seen, what they saw, what they heard. Uh, 
Well, he hasn't, he hasn't always been a person of interest. Obviously, he was on the boat. There were four people on the boat that night, and one of them ended up in the water dead. Um, uh, so, but as the investigation progressed, I mean, we were able to recreate the timeline and cut, get it down to where he was the last person with her on the back of the boat arguing before everything went quiet. And then uh, next thing you know, uh, Dennis Deverne comes down to check on what, what happened, and there's Robert Wagner in the salon of the boat. He's saying, Natalie's gone. She's missing, you know, and then uh, he sends him to go look around the boat to look for Natalie. It's not that big of a boat. And next thing you know, he tells him, oh, and by the way, the dinghy's now gone. So um, uh, it didn't make any sense. No one heard the dinghy start up. No one heard the dinghy uh, uh, take off. She, she doesn't drive the dinghy. Um, I can go on and on, but yeah, it's just, it uh, didn't add up. But right now, he's officially a person of interest. Well, he's a person of interest because he's the last person with her before she went in the water. Right, so he's there, he's the last one with her, and somehow she gets in the water. Lieutenant, what's the difference between a person of interest and a suspect in your view? Well, you know, this is a suspicious death investigation. It's not a murder investigation. So he's not a suspect of, uh, of like a, committing a murder or a crime. We're just trying to figure out what happened from that point, from that argument, and then how she got in the water. Just that, he's a person of interest like, uh, um, he was there with her, last person with her, before she ends up dead. Can you make him talk to you that not in the person Not in the United States of America, we can't. You know, he can, he can say, uh, no, I don't want to talk to you. So, and that's his right, and we understand that. And we've tried to talk to him. And so far, he's, uh, uh, didn't want to, he doesn't want to talk to us. Could there be a point where you decide we want to press charges against him? No, no. no. No, not right now. Like I said, this is a suspicious death investigation. We're not pressing charges on anyone. We're still trying to uh, just figure out what happened. What's up, Pete? Well, there, you know, that that's um, uh, there were. I would have to say. Um, there, there was uh, what Dennis Deverne heard, you know, like sound like a fight going on in the salon in the, in, um, in their stateroom, uh, their bedroom. It sounded like Robert Wagner and Allie Wood were fighting, and he came down from the top of the boat to check on him because he was so, so worried. He said Robert Wagner looked so angry, so crazy that he told him he was afraid for his own safety, so he went back up. And when Robert Wagner told him get out of here, so he went back up to the top of the boat, and then they end up on the back of the boat arguing before everything went quiet. And then yes. There were bruises on Natalie Wood's body that, um, uh, that's, that's, that's the coroner's purview, obviously. They're the experts, but they, serve, they say they're non-mechanical. They're caused probably by another person. So in essence, we are saying that whoever was there at the end of it would have inflicted those injuries, which could be assisted in a struggle, a fight, or someone getting tossed, <coughs> thrown off the back of that boat? Yeah, I can't say who, who caused the injuries. But uh, um, they may have been, they could have been caused by someone else. What's that? Right. And we, we know who was with her before she went, the last person was with her before she went in the water. And that was Mr. Wagner. Uh, we're closer to understanding what happened, I think. We're closer to understanding exactly what happened that weekend and how it kind of went down. I think before we were all uh, believing the story, oh, she must have gotten the dinghy, tried to go into town in her nightgown and her socks by herself when it's raining out and the seas are really rough and there, it's, uh, you can't even see in the, in the, at midnight, and, um, which made no, absolutely no sense if you really think about it. So um, I think we have a better understanding now what happened. Can you talk a little bit more about that timeline? What happened in the uh, no, I'm, I'm not, I, can't, I can't go through the whole three, three days. There's a lot that went on, but um, um, uh, we've talked about it before, especially on the program, uh, 48 hours, we laid it out a little bit uh, more. So um, um, maybe check that out, but I'm not going to try and go through the whole three days up here. No, he's not. No, he, uh, he was actually uh, supposed to be in his stateroom sleeping, and uh, Deverne confirmed that when he went searching for Natalie Wood, he was in his stateroom uh, sleeping. And just one other thing, the, um, the two witnesses, you say, are they um, separate from the two who previously reported um, the stockbroker and her boyfriend, John? Yes. Are they two separate witnesses? Yes. <coughs> Uh, 
Uh, no, he's we can never force him to talk to us. Obviously, he's uh, he has rights and he can he, he can uh, not talk to us if he doesn't want to, um, suspect or not. But um, uh, the only time it's going to turn out to be you know to be uh, we, is it gonna be an accident or a murder is we find out how she went in the water. If she was she placed in the water, was she unconscious and then placed in the water, was she put in the water by somebody, um, so or did she accidentally fall in the water and nobody helped her.